Hello, Twilight, my fellow hunters. Middle Lux Waffles here. I hope you hear me in the game okay. You see the game okay? You hear the music? You're doing great. Welcome to another Bloodborne lore video. This one is for Hemwick. The hunter can first hear of Hemwick when unlocking the Bone Marrow Ash in the item shop at the Dream. Getting there is fairly easy. You've already cleared the Cathedral Ward area. So those of you who don't explore, take a left at the Grand Cathedral where you find the Garnier. Some of them can be seen as optional, but I'm sure there are people out there who stare at their runes and look up how to use them because, seriously, I think Hemmock is fairly optional if you don't care about runes. Now, when you start going toward Hemwick, it looks to me like the place you just dug out through a small mountainside. We're going to ignore the headstones because that's part of my, not my, a working theory of Yarnum's halfway falling into a nightmare realm, or a dream realm, if there can be considered a difference. But on the way, you can see a battered sign that reads Hemlock. Take note that Hemlock is very close to the Healing Church. As you run through this little cave tunnel-like area, it becomes more blaring than obvious that this might have just been dug out. Or, like I said, it could just be that working theory of the dream nightmare-like state that night the Yarnum has halfway fallen into. Now as you get through here, your hunter will be met with hunters with guns, the huntsmen, the mob, you know, and then hunting dogs. If night and you have enough insight, there will be mad ones who appear. If you want arcane gems right away, I would recommend you first come through here at night time with the required insight. Because they tend to drop those. Now you're not going to get a title for Hemwick until you open the main doorway. The entrance area might actually technically be part of the Cathedral Ward area, but don't quote me on that. I'm likely wrong. Inside Hemwick, you will find only women are attacking our hunters, say Brick Trolls, Executioners, and a Wheelchair Huntsman. My lore guide, Jerk Sands Frontiers, figured that hunting is something that the men do, not the women. Here are the women of Hemet can whip your hunter apart, but they aren't expected to join the hunt. Well, expected is the wrong word, let's go with this instead. Back in this time, men would should always protect a woman, and so that is why any mobs your hunter comes across, there's only men. Think back to your previous experiences in the Central Yarnum. But hey, even we know that some men hide indoors and don't join the hunt. So clearly they don't have to hunt and the women should be kept safe, which is precisely what we see happening in Hemwick. So this little part here, the gunmen and the hunting dogs sniff out any beast that tries to come into Hemwick and takes care of them before they even get close to the main area. There's a lot of gunmen here, and a, a good lot of hunting dogs. It's a good place to grow quicksilver bullets, which you can't buy. Now, if you wish to get a good look at these women that are attacking you, they don't appear to be suffering from any form of the beastly scourge like the men do. The women, will, the women wear bandages and the like, but honestly, I think that may be because of what their job is in Hemwick, but we'll get to that. Women of Hemwick, if you notice, don't have weapons but tools. Take the sickle and the meat cleaver, and that thing that acts as a fire poker. That long burning stick thing with a piece of metal on the end. What the heck is that? Or I heard something. Anyway. 
course, also a large hammer. They will also toss a makeshift version of a Molotov at your hunter. Yes, I know, you pick Molotovs off of them, but this is a game, so we're gonna say, BS this situation, it's a game mechanic, don't question it, roll with it. It's a makeshift version. <laughs> so, what we know so far is the men guard the path with their hunting dogs, while the women just use tools that come with their work. We're showing, I guess, that women just don't join the hunt. That doesn't mean, however, they can't defend themselves, because they can and will rip you apart. Something very noteworthy that I actually didn't consider was the fact that you don't see beasts in Henwick because the huntsmen and their hunting dogs keep track of that over in the pathway that leads here. They shoot them down. Either that, if someone starts to turn in Henwick, you're carefully watched and if it begins to happen, you immediately get shot down. In Central Yarnum, we see patrols that look for beasts. In Hemwick, the area is so closed off that controlling the beasts from the outside is easier. Only place a beast can come in is from the entrance at the Cathedral Ward, where we saw the gunmen and the hunting dogs. They can gun them down and tear them apart with their dogs before they ever get into the lane. I'll leave out some of what Jerk Sands Frontier says. As I talk about the areas I run through them, he brings up something that is mentioned later on and I refuse to ever enter Hemlock until that time in the game. Those runes are too useful not to get as soon as you can. <laughs> like I said, it's it's considered optional, but I wouldn't use it as an optional thing. We will go with this then. Does anyone know what a charnel house is? Anybody? No? Well, if you didn't know, I am not surprised. Because I didn't know what it was. So. To what was explained, a charnel house is a place where bones are stored to keep burial ground from taking too much space. Considering all the death in the Arnhem, it's understandable why this whole lane is dedicated to doing such things. Charnel houses are all over this area, and you see smoke coming from lots of places. Now, as you can see, I'm pointing one out to you right now. Turn a little bit. Another one. The actual house next to it. Run down and beaten up. The chimney over there. The trial houses are all over the area. You can see the smoke coming from lots of places. Think of the lane as a mining town. Everyone who lives here will work on these charnel houses or protect the women. The main building where the boss fight happens, which we'll go point out real quick before we carry forward. Just up here anyway. But this main building... Don't ragdoll, you little jerk. Just up there. It's fairly huge, don't you think? Got a little house chilling next to it, too. But that building is effing huge. This building, though... Don't think this is a charnel house. The bodies have flesh and such, so they couldn't store those bones too well. Maybe they're stuffing the bodies in there until they can be strung up, as we see outside. The corpses outside the building, all in that area that are hung up, aren't just there to creep us out. You saw them when I played this. They are effing everywhere. As you can see, they're all strung up, tied securely. 
Like I said, they're not just here to creep you out. The way this works from what he said is that a dead body is tethered to a pole up in the air or on the ground so the animals can pick the corpse clean. This appears to mostly be done by crows, and there's a fair number of killing crow enemies in Hamlet, but also normal crows, which you can see flying away when you enter the area, and circling above the large building over there. Plus, those are birds of prey. And now, we get to the dark stuff. <laughs> this whole place looks like a charnel lane, and can be called such. I agree with the theory that what really happens here is organ harvesting and cremation. Now, why on earth would I agree with this theory? <laughs> because Jerk Sands Frontiers made a very good argument that was hard to counter. Do you remember the corpse we saw on this guillotine? This thing right here. Which, um, appears to be tied up. And the hand fell off. That's very grim. The absence, when does a guillotine have spikes on it? I guess to prevent you from struggling. Different. And definitely incredibly grim. <laughs> Didn't realize this corpse was tied up <laughs> for the longest while now. That's more disturbing. But you will pick up a bloodshot eyeball from this thing. Now I know, this isn't exactly the highest level of being confirmation, that's what this place was used for. But I agree with the theory because this is effing Yarno. And bad things happen here. But do you also remember that smoke I was mentioning from the chimneys? From the charnel houses? Well, I'm sure you noticed there's a bunch of smoke pouring out of these pipes on the walls. Sort of hard to notice that. Hard to miss that, actually, sorry. There's also some strange black goop. And <laughs> it's just a wall there, you can't... <laughs> that was crappily done, developer, what the F? That's on all of them too, isn't it? Yeah, that one you can't look too deeply into. Wow, that's stupid. <laughs> yeah, there's black crap coming out of that as well. Now let's think back to the one with the fire poker. She was likely recently tending to fires. And which is probably why the thing was so bloody hot. Oh, no one is weak to fire! <laughs> Something else heavily noteworthy that we're going to go and run over to real quick. Now, I'm sure you noticed on the pathway into Hemwick, where all the huntsmen and hunting dogs are, there were oil urns around. I mean, you, come on, you gotta admit, it would be pretty convenient just to try to line up a beast with the oil urn and cap the urn and watch it get exploded in flame. That would be a more convenient way to deal with it than constantly capping it and hoping your hunting dogs can rip it apart. It'd still be effective, but it would take a little bit longer. This is where you find the carrying crows up here. So. Eerie. <laughs> In Hemwick, you'll find large containers of oil in a barn full of hay. However... It's blaringly obvious to see that most of the animals appear dead. Basically everywhere. So the guess is the women are using the oil and these bunches of hay to fuel their fires. I mean, they have to use something. Maybe they don't want to destroy all their trees, so they have to work with something. And the uh, wheelchair huntsman I made sure to note, and earlier on is over here. 
I'm not sure what the purpose is to this spot, other than the Chai Maiden who will appear here. Not like all this noise effect that I'm hearing. I really don't. I don't think I need to be up here anymore. Where do I go now? Right. Okay, we're gonna head back down. Probably without falling off this bridge. So I have to kill everything again. <laughs> Now, once we're down here, we're gonna take a quick looky-loo around. Places we see the smoke coming out of. Like that one. And that one over there. And possibly a few others we can't see from down here. Out of my way, you stupid stretcher. Anywhere you see smoke coming out of is probably a small charnel house. I have heard of tiny houses, but that's too small. The working theory is that that is a place where a corpse is burning. You can also spot the stretcher next to the guillotine that has the dead body on it. You get the bloodshot eyes off if you haven't broken it, but there's a stretcher here too. Now, let's think back to that, uh, bone marrow ash. I happened to pick some up while I was killing things, so that was useful. The stuff is made in Hemwick. And I don't think those were animal bones, my dear fellow hunters. <sighs> the healing church mainly uses hemwick to dispose of bodies that might have been infected. This theory comes to play by the executioners you see. I mean, the working theory with them is that they are were part of Logarius's little club. Yes, I'm going to call it a club. And that they helped lay siege to Castle Canehurst. There's also the theory that they are from Yarhagul, helping kidnap people or at least collecting dead bodies for the ritual. Or hey, they could be part of the healing church. Following orders to bring dead bodies here or to collect things. Anything of worth in these bodies is harvested, such as the eyes and organs and the bones. The church must get materials from someplace after all, as not every hunter is connected to the dream. The bones, however, when not made into bone marrow ash, are given to the church to make that incense. If you break open some of those pops in Odin Chapel or that the Cathedral Ward entrance, you will find human bones in them, and I do believe I showed that off at some point. Now, I am not positive how that works. They must treat the bones with something that makes the beast remain away. I mean, bones. How would that work without adding something to said bone? Think about it. Ugh. That one's always just not made sense to me, and I wonder if anyone else has figured that one out. It's not like you can pick up an incense lantern and take it. I don't know. That one just never made sense at all. Alright, so we find bodies are stored here. Nice. Alright, boss room. The Witch of Hemwick is covered in eyes. They're even on her lantern. Something I think allows her to use arcane attacks like the church servants, since they have eyes on their lanterns when using arcane attacks. You can see this if you have enough insight ahead of time. But more often than not, it happens more after the blood moon has risen. The witch also has the short staff, or stick. It sort of looks like a crow's beak if you get a good look at the thing. In a way... I mean, take a look at it and let me know what you think. I mean, it looks like a crow's beak. <laughs> Even Jerk Sam's Frontiers thought so. 
I had to agree when he outlined it. Now, if they grab your hunter, they hold that thing to your hunter's eyes and do a great deal of damage. They might be trying to carve out your eyes through your skull. <laughs> Who the witch is, or which is, and what she wants, I couldn't say, but clearly she wants eyes. Even Master Willem says insight was more important than messing with the eldritch blood, or rather old blood as they put it. But even I don't have the best thoughts toward Bergenworth nowadays. I used to think they were okay, but then I learned better. But now let's stick with Hemwick. Dirk Sands Frontiers goes on to say crows go after eyes first on a dead body, and given the witch uses that, perhaps crows are important to Hemwick. We do see an awful lot of them. He does a character study on the enemies now, which I'll add to the lore. The woman with the hammer likely grinds up the bones, which makes sense. And that becomes Bone Marrow Ash. The woman with the sickle? She likely has the fun job of removing flesh and organs from the corpses. The woman with the meat cleaver might just use that to chop up bodies. The bad ones that we see in the Bosch room and potentially in Hemwick itself, they're a little trickier. But let's think back to that black sludge we saw coming out of those vents on the wall with all the smoke. They appear only at night, and if you have more than 15 in sight. Bad ones are summoned by the witch. And keep in mind how the summon looks as a chime maiden later on does their own summons. They look very similar. If you get a close up of the mad ones, you can see something is falling off them and they bleed a strange oil substance that looks like the black stuff you see in the pipes, like I said. So, maybe the witches are using Hemwick to their advantage, taking the ash, the bone marrow, capturing smoke somehow, and taking the oil and doing who knows what else to create these weird things. Again, why? Couldn't tell you. Not sure. As for this building here, it's in a state of ruin, and the witch isn't really making much use of it, so what is this place? The working theory, and I do agree with this, is that Castle Cadehurst used to control Hemwick, and that this building was a manor or even a boarding house for troops to keep track of what went on here. I mean, there was plenty of room. I'm not sure about this part in the building entirely, but there's more to it. I mean, maybe these beds are left over from when it was a boarding house. Not to mention, there's more to this building. We just can't access it. If anything, it looks like we just have access to a basement. The rest of it, we are unable to mess with, unless you know how to glitch. But even, even then, nothing might be up there. Dirk Sands Frontiers also asked an interesting question on how Kaders got their supplies. I mean, I had to wonder this myself, because how else would they have lived? Maybe the castle had its own gardens and livestock? Or they just traded with Hemwick and Yarnum before things went downhill. And now with the bridge broken down there, well, the majority of the castle is dead. All that's really left is the servants, the gargoyles, and Queen Annalise herself, who doesn't appear to really need anything. She's immortal. See, the bridge is broken. And what? I am like, hey, is all the way over there. And look how big this building is! It stretches all the way over there! Seriously, we only access a small part of it. Now, the executioners most likely destroyed the building just because Kaners had controlled it. And those current enemies there patrolling around the area might be hanging out to keep anyone from getting close to Kaners from getting out of the castle. Because there are the two executioners. Three if you count the one hiding by that house over there. And you do have to count him because he is there. Because <laughs> you can see the broken bridge and Kaners in the distance, like I showed you. And 
point at Kanehurst, you can see Hemwick. So this theory sounds pretty fair to me, though I have to wonder if Kanehurst used Hemwick for the same reason the human church uses the place for now. It wouldn't heavily surprise me. There is a particular statue in the boss building over here. It's something I've looked at a few times and wondered about the significance of it. That one right there. Featuring a woman standing over a man lying down. What the statue means is a lot of theories, and I don't know which I follow, but that's something noteworthy to bring up, so I figured I'd point this out. As for the dead hunter down here we pick up the rune workshop tool from, I mentioned it in the actual playthrough video, walkthrough video. And, um... Some of the theories I've heard is that they think that this is Carol. Many others say no, that this isn't them. And it's hard to tell because you're not certain on gender, given the name or even the hunter themselves. However, I don't think this is Carol either, so we're going to move forward. The fact that they have that room workshop tool, though, makes you wonder if they were in the dream once upon a time, but allowed themselves to be severed. Goodness, I bet they wish they hadn't done that when this occurred. I don't want to think about what this person went through, but it seems like they've been here for a long time. I think they're rather skeletal. Gosh. Very at least, have very little skin left. A hunter. I don't want to consider the tortures you went through. I mean, I think they only took out the eyes, but... Yeah, let's not think about that one. The dead hunter could have also been trying to find Kanehurst and was caught, or was just wandering the area and the witch grabbed them to make the eyes out. However, I don't think this was recent, because as I was looking around it, this body, you could see they're either very thinly skinned, have you been dead for a while and are decaying, or this is just skeletal? That's bad timing, I'll edit that out now. Let's put something over it. And I had my HUD up the whole time, apologies. But, that is all of my lore for Hamlet. Gosh, it almost took me 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, there was a lot to discuss. So the next thing you see in Bloodborne at this point will be the uh, Hypogean Gale, and then probably after that, the Forbidden Woods. Ah, oh boy, Forbidden Woods is gonna suck. <laughs> but, I thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to support my YouTube channel, please like, subscribe, and share it. If you'd like to support my Twitch channel, please follow and share it. And above all, I hope you enjoyed this, you had fun, and I'll see you in the next one. And remember, my dear Twilight and fellow hunters, fear the old blood. Okay, don't mess with it. <laughs>